All right, so this is where we had left off with yesterday. You're probably going to notice me looking at my microphone. These batteries have been sitting around all summer, so hopefully they still have retained enough uh, power to get us through this class. So from uh, yesterday, okay, there are two types of digestion, okay? What might they be? There you have chemical digestion and mechanical. So what is the first type of digestion? Well, I'm hearing mechanical, I'm hearing chemical. Well, we're getting it right because we're saying both of them. We getting in on this auction? Is it mechanical or chemical? It depends what type of food, but for the most part, it is mechanical digestion because what happens is as you are, is it mac and cheese today? I, what are we, what did we, okay. Yeah. I didn't know we were at our living room. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for the most part, yes, whatever it is you're consuming, you start chewing and it's just something that you're taught, okay, chew your food so you can swallow it, you don't choke over it. Yes, that is true. But why is it that we chew our food? because then that leads into the mechanical digestion, okay? So again, is it mac and cheese today? Okay, then tomorrow it's uh, pepperoni pizza, perhaps? Okay, so with that, we'll just use uh, pepperoni as an example, and that is, of course, that is a type of protein product, correct? Yes, you have your dough, which is carbohydrate based. You're going to have your cheese on there, which is probably more so lipid slash fat based. But then your toppings on there, whether it's sausage, but in this case, pepperoni, which is protein based. Okay. So maybe you are the type that, oh, I'm more so of a cheese pizza person. So you start picking and plotting, not plotting picking the uh, pepperoni off of there and then say, here, I don't want these pepperonis. So you give them to uh, friends slash classmates. But notice if they have a stack of 10, you just don't pop all those 10 pep pap pepperonis in your mouth and swallow it. One, yes, you could probably choke. But why is it that you don't just swallow it? So it's not choking. Why don't you just swallow that, even if you could? Is it easy for us to break down proteins? Yes, it is. But not if it's a solid cluster. Okay? So I'm looking at our... What, goldfish, is that what those are? Okay. Do you suppose, is there a, is there a reason that those uh, goldfish crackers are so small? Probably so young people don't choke over them, but what would happen if the goldfish was about the size of a, your, your common mouse here? Okay, did I stop it? No, it's still going. Okay. But if that goldfish was the size of that and you swallowed it, would it be easy for you to digest? The answer is no. Because what is breaking those materials down, whether it's your pepperoni or whether it's your, is it gold, do you call them goldfish? Okay, so what is it that's breaking down your goldfish and or pepperonis? Specific enzymes but they're not going to work very efficiently if it's a large cluster that you're trying to break down, okay? What about if, 
and I usually use hot dogs as an example because that's a bigger, um, let's say, protein product. If you take one bite of your hot dog and your who Joey Joey Chestnut, does anyone know who that is? Okay, why is that tied into July Fourth? Yeah, it's a hot dog eating contest. So in 10 minutes, is it 10 minutes? We'll just say it's 10 minutes. How many hot dogs do you think? It's the bun too. I don't know if it's 68 this year, but he was shooting for 78 or in the 80s. Just picture, and these are Nathan's hot dogs, so they're probably a little bit long. I don't know if they're, they're, they're bigger round too, but just the idea of consuming that many hot dogs. That I don't know how they, they train for something like that. I think the stomach on him has to be just huge because the stomach is a muscle too that is prone to, because it can be stretched just like any other muscle in the body, but then I think it contracts back to closer to an original um, size. But just the idea, if you don't chew that, What are we doing? It doesn't look like nothing. Just like a little little kid has to have our hands in everything. Right? Okay. I don't know, maybe this isn't boring, is it? Or it just helps you focus. Okay. But what happens is when you chew that hot dog, you're breaking it up into smaller pieces. And when you do that, does that increase the surface area or decrease the surface area? It's getting smaller, so that an increase in area or decrease? It's just the opposite of what you would think. You are increasing that surface area. And once you increase that area, what can work more efficiently? You don't have to give specific names of these, but we said amylase was one, pepsin was another. Those are specific what? Those are specific enzymes. They will work way more efficiently on smaller pieces of, of food. That's why you chew. It's just not something that's really taught to us yet, so we don't choke over that, but mainly just so we can actually have a better way of digesting those. Because sometimes you probably get bloated and, and things like that. No one wants to be bloated because you just don't feel very good. And typically, it's not always common in men, but we're probably the most guilty of that when you think of Kentucky Fried Chicken, Pizza Ranch, uh, establishments like that, what might those two have in common? Starts with a B. Okay, ladies, hop in. Yeah, there's, which, one of you two said that, I don't know which one, but, oh, okay, I couldn't quite tell where it came from. It's a buffet, okay? You've paid your 1075, which I, I don't know. Okay, once through. Oh, Mongolian grill, that's probably another one. Okay, now we're maybe in a more familiar territory, right? You go through once. Eh, maybe a smaller serving the next time, but guys, we're getting our money's worth, right? Away we go again. Then it's kind of, oh, uh, why did I do that, right? Maybe you don't ever go through that. Ladies, do you do that too? Oh, uh, I'm getting my money's worth. Sorry? I could have swore that's what Kung Fu or something. <laughs> I didn't quite catch what you said. Anyway, okay, we'll, we'll move on. Okay, so mechanical and chemical digestion. So what is it that's doing the mechanical digestion then? 
Yeah, your teeth. Your tongue actually just presses it up against this structure on the top of your oral cavity. It starts with a P. It's your palate. That's right. Okay. Structures of this submucosa. Okay. So, with this, be specific with this. What is part of your elementary canal? You can be start at the beginning, the end, the middle, you pick. Because I think we went through, if you really wanted to be specific, you could probably hit 10, because three of them are in the same structure. So, something within the elementary canal. That's one, esophagus. Stomach. Stomach. Small, Small intestine. Large intestine. Large intestine. And then that's where we say, uh, because the small intestine actually has three parts to it, that's where you can actually increase that number. So if that's what the elementary canal, canal is composed of, what is something that is not part of the elementary canal? the pancreas and the liver. So what those do is they contribute to this structure because the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas all contain what? Starts with an E. Yeah, enzymes, that's where enzymes are found. And it's not nece necessarily just enzymes, it's also hormones. And in an in indirect manner, the stomach also has the capability of producing hormones, gazuntite as well, because it's, it's just the way the body works. It's a light switch that, that turns on your pepsin production. That's a, a detailed mechanism that we'll talk about later on in this chapter. So where would you believe that this structure is located? It's not just the elementary canal, but if it contains blood vessels that will absorb nutrients to send throughout the rest of the body. This can, is probably only in one specific structure. A little further down the line, your intestines, because that is where your nutrients are absorbed. Okay, and what type of structure or excuse me, what type of vessel, it just says blood vessels here. What specific type of blood vessels are found within the small intestine? Really, 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 really tiny ones. They're only one cell layer thick. What do we put on our head? A baseball what? Okay. So capillaries, you have capillaries are the small types of vessels that will actually help you absorb nutrients to get into the bloodstream and then send it to where it needs to go. Okay. Okay. I'm just, I don't know if the microphone picks up me laughing, but before class, I see we put our white watch on. Now I see it's off. Yeah, I took it off because I was going to try to turn my phone. Oh, okay.
Okay. So I, I just noticed it. That's all. Yeah. We're mean, but what? Hopefully we can agree upon that. Now, there's, of course, there's a reason why food particles move down your digestive tract in this fashion and and to me I I've always thought the, the the best way to look at this is the drum of a cement truck as that's rolling down the road the drum is the really big structure that's on the back axle of that cement truck but as that is rolling down the road what is that drum doing it spins okay and, and that's for a couple of reasons. So one, so the, so the, almost depends, some people, that's wrong. Is it cement or concrete? Well, it's cement when it's in the truck, but once it hardens, then it's concrete. But as it's rolling down the road, it's spinning, so it doesn't get hard and form concrete. But another reason is, what are some of the ingredients? Of course, there's sand, there's gravel course then there's cement there's different types of rocks and then there's water okay so as that is spinning all of them are mixing so that once you actually do pour it cement is one of the few things that actually um, will harden in the presence of water usually water will make things softer but in this case even though there's water in there it actually evaporates out and hardens forms concrete okay and I think there's other, there's different types of chemicals that are in there that actually help that concrete process, that process of curing the concrete as well. But when this is spinning, one way of looking at that is that's how it's being propelled down your digestive tract for two reasons. Remember, we say you're chewing your food. Why is that? To increase the surface area of what to have a better effect for digestion. Enzymes, whether it's pepsin, amylase, lipase, and enzymes, and that's in, in uh, that as an example. So what happens is as it's spinning, okay, there's two types of movements. Just think of like in a tube of toothpaste, circular, you're squeezing it like this, then the longitudinal type is like this, okay? So you have circular contractions then longitudinal ones like this that will cause that to spin. And when that happens, it's just increasing your food particles with the enzymes to help break them down. Okay. So whether it's yourself patting yourself in the belly or if your dog is asking for a belly rub and you pat them in their abdominal area, feels pretty soft, right? And the reason that it feels pretty soft is, of course, that's where their intestines are located and there's lots of mucus that actually surrounds those intestines just like in humans as it does in, you could say, domesticated dogs because what that does is that a lot, your intestines are not going to stay uh, in one place like this. They will move around occasionally and, when, and that's perfectly normal. And the reason for that 
is there's an outer structure called an omentum that actually holds that in place. Now, should something unfortunate happen, if it could happen in weightlifters, for instance, if they tried to lift too much and put a lot of strain in their core, what happens is their intestines can get perforated out. Does anyone know what that's specifically called? It starts with an H. Yeah, it's a hernia. Okay, so if there's a natural bend or curve in that intestine like this, but then it becomes perforated and a hernia results, now it's protruding out. Now, just like in a garden hose, does water go through this structure now? No, because we call that a kink. So the same thing can happen when someone maybe gets a hernia is that gets perforated out and causes a kink in there and nothing can pass through there. Okay, is that something that, eh, just give it some time, it'll go away. Probably not, okay? And is that serious? Yes, it is very serious because what's going to happen is you're going to start to accumulate waste products in there that are not very beneficial for, for us. And that's why then a surgeon probably would, would go into your abdominal cavity, cut that omentum that we're talking about that holds your intestines in place, and probably sew that back together to hold that where it's supposed to be so then you get that natural flow again within your intestines. Okay. So we talked about the two types of movements, which are what specifically? What is this type of movement? Because this is a what? So circular movements, and then this one, longitudinal. And when that happens at the same time, what does that cause your food particles to do? Spiral down through your intestinal cavity intestinal tube or intestinal walls, whichever we want, whichever way you want to look at that. Okay. Where does that put us? Um, movements of the tube. Okay. I didn't quite get to uh, this yesterday like I had wanted, so I'm just going to do this. All right. Okay. What is, what does it say about the lumen in your small intestine? What are those called? So if this is a cross section of your intestine, we've magnified it quite a bit. It's what type of projections are those called? Yeah, they're finger-like projections, okay? So again, this is a cross section then, and these finger-like projections I guess I don't know if they have to be next to one another. Now, if you draw this fine, if not, that's not necessary either. It's entirely up to you. This just helps me to hopefully show you what's going on. Okay? So rather than just having an open tube like this, what happens when you start drawing these lumen in here? What does that do to that surface area? It really increases it. But that's not the only thing that's found with inside these lumen. So to color coordinate this, we would see this inside of here. Okay. And then hmm. I don't want to use purple. Let's see here. Try this one. Okay. 
Okay. Now, we had talked about this first hour or second hour. I think for you ladies on the far left side, I think you two are right by seeing the board, but in the back, is this tough to see? Or maybe it's about right here. Is that a blind spot? No? Hmm. Okay. Because I was always thought there was a glare that came. But you can see this just fine. Okay. So if this is a cross section of the intestine, which it is, these finger like projections are called lumen. But what are the little squiggly lines in there? They're color coded. They're capillaries, that's true, but one of them is this type, the other one's another type. If it's red, it's what? And if it's blue, it's, yeah, veins and arteries. Actually, they wouldn't be capillaries, they'd, they'd just be arteries and veins because once it's absorbed, then gets absorbed into the capillaries and gets into your bloodstream because waste products will accumulate, the veins will carry waste products away, and then the uh, capillary or the arteries will deliver nutrients. Okay? So that's why it's important that we have these finger-like projections within our intestines because that actually increases the, uh, the surface area then. Okay. I look at this and I see we're up to uh, 27 minutes, so I think that is perhaps enough for today. We will start discussing um, uh, what's called an oral surgery tomorrow. Some of the things that we utilize as, let's say, uh, tools to help explain this, like last hour, what did we watch in here? It was about what? eyesight. Now, that's probably almost 10 years old, but it doesn't invalidate the usefulness of explaining material. This uh, oral surgery is on an infant. Oddly enough, his name is Jackson, even. So, but he's not in here. Oh, that was last hour he was supposed to be in here. So, um, with that, we'll start uh, discussing that. And then... Your first vocabulary evaluation, I would be led to believe is perhaps, I don't know, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. Now, with that, okay, do you have as many grades in here as you do with biology? Well, you might, but there's going to be more vocabulary evaluations than what you have in biology. And with that, that just means that there's going to be more of those, more points, and uh, and again, I can't stress this enough. We're glad we're here, but this is uh, uh, difficult material. So that's for another time and another place. We'll catch up to you next time.